We've been talking about this for how long? We have. It's uh, for years. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> probably two years. Yeah. I think we've almost been taking cold showers for as long as we've been talking about coming out. At least we have this. a really good base of, of what we're <laughs> going to talk about now, because before we were just now we've lived actual life through a pandemic, through through pandemic, through life, through business, through family and Absolutely, been taking the cold man. showers. Would you do it without it? Uh, no, no, man. <laughs> no. no, no. Cold showers are the thing, man. I was uh, I was outside doing lawn work yesterday, and I found myself leaning over, pulling us dripping. Like I could see the sweat coming off my brow, and I was like totally soaked. And I was like, if you have that feeling of accomplishment that you're getting something done, not to mention it was on the honeydew list. Absolutely. And so like wife's gonna be so excited. So I'm sitting there pulling, and I remember thinking to myself, oh, I get a cold shower after this. <laughs> now, if you had said two years ago to me that I'd be like, oh, I get a cold yeah. shower after this. You remember there, that phone call? Say. Oh. <laughs> It was, but uh, honestly, I got done with the yard work. I got all done. I, and, and I made myself get as dirty as possible. Like I just didn't even care. Nobody was around. <laughs> Covered in dirt, top to bottom. Dying, breathing heavy. It was a lot of yard work. Sorry. Sure. And, um, but yeah, and, and I, I thought, oh my God, I get it after. And then when I stepped into the cold shower, honestly, that endorphin rush or whatever it was that goes along with it, I, you know, I don't know the scientific terms of exactly what happens, but man, it just popped. I just had this smile across my face and I felt much better, which is of course much different than when we started taking cold yeah. showers. Do you remember like standing off to the side and like, one, two, three. Yeah, like no the, joke. What do you call it? The flinch? The, pushing past the flinch. Pushing past the yeah. flinch. Yeah. And I identify with that. Uh -huh. Like identify with that, but I think we <laughs> take the, the cold showers and the identify and pushing past the flinch, but I think it's so relatable to everything else. Yeah. And I think that the one act that you and I have really, you know, establishes our thing and a lot of people that we know is this cold shower thing where people think we're crazy. Yeah. But I do believe that it's almost a metaphor. I feel like these cold showers are a metaphor for regular life and, and pushing past the flinch or pushing past the uncomfortable. Or like now I told you, we used to go. <laughs> now we just okay. kind of step in it. Oh, my wife, first first week of taking cold showers, she was like, you could tell when I was taking a shower because I was breathing Screaming, so heavily yeah. and yeah, just in, out. And now I get to a point where, you know, I look for ways to like improve it. Yeah. And I know that seems weird, but um, one of the craziest things I've done with a cold shower is I actually put a mouthful of mouthwash in my mouth so that I, <laughs> what? Could, so that I couldn't breathe in and out so that I had That's to like, outstanding. You know, stay in the moment and uh, took a cold shower that way. That's um, awesome. So it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I have um, found myself judging them now. Uh, <laughs> I have uh, summers. The wa water's too warm. Okay. Yeah. You know, because yeah. uh, naturally the water's too warm because it's 110 degrees out. You need to live on a well. A well Apparently, water. Apparently, you have yeah. well water. I yeah. don't. I live in the city, so <laughs> not as warm. Yeah, it is. I, I get reprieve now. The worst part is it's the worst for me during mm -hmm. the winter, yeah. and it's like when you want to be warm. So I'm literally out there. So I'm biking away or doing whatever I'm doing for the workout. I get my you know level up to wherever it's going to be, and then I get so hot. And I get off the bike or get off it. I'm like a little cold, you know, because it's cold <laughs> out. And I, by the time I get to the bathroom, I'm like, well, I'm already cold. And then I'm like, Ch -ch -ch, and ice comes out of the yeah. shower. But again, the metaphor, I think that the harder that it is, I, you need to be pushed further during the winter anyway. It's easy to go outside and run in the summer and the spring and the fall. It's absolutely yep. not a problem. Yep. But in the winter, where does everybody gain their weight? You know, where does everybody get? So it's almost like it. Yet again, you know, the cold shower is a metaphor for life. Absolutely. Gets a little bit more difficult when it's a little more difficult. And and one of the coolest things about the cold showers that that I've found is there's there's never been a time in the last I mean, we're we're pushing past a year and a half at this point now. Mm -hmm. There's never been a time where I got out of the shower and I felt cold. No, gosh. because you start warming up as soon as you get out of the shower. Absolutely. Yeah. No, actually, the moment you start thinking about getting out of the yeah, shower and absolutely. you kind of stand there with that vigor, yeah. too, because you just went through it. Mm -hmm. And there is a warmth that goes over you, too, because you brought your body to such a level of shock that once it's recovering from itself, because yep. obviously your body starts to fight and starts shooting all that back. Um, yeah, I think, I, again, you know, that we, we could just beat that metaphor into the ground yeah. and what it represents for me. It's an uncomfortability, and I talk about the uncomfort, you know, being uncomfortable and 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 and, and stretching your boundaries. Um, I think the cold shower is a reminder every single morning to make sure that the day is like that. Yeah, and I think that it's a reminder to you know, it's very easy to get up and not want to get up. It's very easy and hit the alarm. It's very easy to hit snooze. It's very easy to skip the workout. You plan on doing an hour, you do thirty. Um, mm -hmm. You can't fake if you're doing a cold shower. You can't fake it. You turn it on, and it's it's yeah. going to be a hundred percent, or it's not going to be. So, but I, again, and you know, it's going to suck. It's going to suck. <laughs> and the good Everyone. news is you can look at it and say that it's going to suck right there. Yep. 
or you can be like the rest of the day is going to be so darn good because it's compared to how bad that sure sucked. <laughs> but, sure you know, not. there's a lot of excuses and I think you find out a lot of people find out about a lot of people with the cold shower thing when you when you um when you talk about it. There are certain ways that I grade and look at people and find out where their commitment level is or their you know where they're at in their journeys. Um, obviously, some people are in different spaces. And I think a lot of the time I use, and I'm sure you do too, probably a litmus test on the cold yeah. shower and see how they react to it. Yeah, I love this. There are either people that are insanely open to it or there are people that are absolutely closed off to it. And then there also is the middle of the road. But yep. I feel like when I find somebody that's like, tell me about that, I might have a brethren. I might have somebody to arm in arm with. You know? So obviously that's how we started. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So uh, you've done some other things recently too, haven't you? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. I might have I might have climbed the tallest mountain in Africa yeah. recently, um, which is yeah. coming on four months, and I can't believe it's been so long now. Yeah. But the funny part is, is that the learning, the lessons that have come from climbing Kilimanjaro associated with the cold showers, associated with my sobriety, associated with my working out, associated with on and on and on and on, it's just it was the natural progression and the next step in my journey was to summit the tallest mountain in Africa. Yeah. That's awesome. And, um, I needed it and I needed it to hurt, but I, but apparently it needed to hurt in a different way that I wasn't aware of because as we've discussed a million times, and one of the basis is for our striving and success is to be uncomfortable. Well, apparently Kilimanjaro wasn't comfortable enough. We needed to throw in a pandemic too. And we needed to make it, Absolutely impossible to get there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely impossible to get back. Absolutely impossible to get to the top. There wasn't a part that wasn't absolutely impossible. I mean, and when I say impossible, I mean from normal Western standards. Yeah. From what somebody is looking at here on the side of the street when we are upset about having to walk a mile to work. Yeah. Kilimanjaro summiting, Kilimanjaro just, just, just the, the act of the vaccinations and the visas and the, and the COVID and all that getting there was in itself. Like at the end of it, I, I, had, I took a breath. I was like relieved. Oh my gosh, finally it's done. All the things are done. You know, and then you know, getting to the mountain and, and seeing that you know, what I had prepared for mentally, physically, emotionally for so many years wasn't even close to what it was. It's like showing up to a baseball game in a football outfit. Yeah. You know, I got to the mountain and I was totally prepared physically. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely had done everything I could possibly do to do that. But Kilimanjaro is emotional. Yeah. Kilimanjaro is your baseline, you against the elements, something we don't experience a lot nowadays as adults in, in America or anywhere else. We, in America mostly. We, yeah. we do not get pushed to our physical limits, our emotional limits or what we perceive as our emotional limits. Because a lot of times, especially in the environment right now, we have so many handcuffs or bracelets on what do we think our emotional limits are, what yeah. we think our physical limits are. And the truth is something that I found out, we aren't even close. Mm -hmm. And by summiting that mountain, I found out that not only am I not close, I am very far away, which is good. Yeah. I have that much more to improve, that much more awesome things to happen, that much more to accomplish, that much more to teach. But it was nice at 45 years old to find out that I had still so much to learn. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. It, the mental and emotional toll. But, you know, I think this again wraps back into those showers, though, is that once you talk about that memory, that muscle memory, you, you feel it a lot. Like, um, when you brush your teeth with your right hand, you pick mm -hmm. up it up, brush away, don't even think about it. Yep. Tomorrow, wake up and brush your teeth with your left hand and see how that goes for you. Oh, yeah. It's going to be like a little awkward. You'll get it done, a little yep. awkward. But you don't, you don't respect and you don't appreciate the muscle memory that is existing in your life until you start to expand your muscle memory more. Yeah. And, I've uh, always had that example with uh, cross your arms and now cross your arms the other way. Ooh, and it just feels doesn't feel right. <laughs> yeah, that's a great example. Yeah, but it's, absolutely it's no, because yeah. brushing your teeth with your other hand. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I can. Uh, I think one of the good, when I smashed my hand years ago biking, yeah. I crushed it. Um, yep. it was awesome. It's totally my fault. I say it was awesome because it kind of was. It was kind of an epic fall. It was kind of a cool little battle. I'd never <laughs> broken anything before. I was like forty three. I'd never broken anything yet. So when I decided I went all out, I 
crushed all the bones in my right hand and decided hey, to move forward. Pins. <laughs> you know, I had a trip to, my, my wife was really excited. We had a trip to Greece coming yeah. up. She loved the fact that I was in a splint the entire time with pins in my hand, <laughs> really making that Greece trip great. <laughs> you know, being able to carry bags from place to place. But, you know, it was, uh, it was a, a, just, a, you know, another lesson. And you found a lot of options to be able to talk to text. Absolutely. <laughs> talk to text. I learned how to get around things. I learned yeah. to overcome. You can either, you know, it's another metaphor. Yeah. I can either overcome it. Here's the deal. During the crushed hand episode, I didn't lose anything. I didn't yeah. stop working out. Working out was more uncomfortable. I yep. sweat profusely, which is really weird. Well, I sweat while I'm working out, but more. <laughs> um, it was horrible. It didn't feel good, um, but I did it every single day, and I didn't change my routine. And I yeah. learned how to use a mouse. By the way, try that one. Oh, why not? Try using a mouse with your non-dominant hand. That'll change your life. So I learned how to use a mouse with my non-dominant hand. Closed more in those two months than I'd ever really closed ever before and, yep. and did it. But use the, use the adversity to overcome and kind of get a win out of it. So it is, I had to find my wins in that because I was honestly, emotionally, uh, it wasn't, it, it wasn't the funnest, yeah. funnest five months. But No. And I know with your trip coming up, you were really worried about it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, you want to bring those yeah. things like, uh, you know, I wasn't going to like a, a cruise or Coco yeah. K Island. I was going to go see Santorini, Mykonos, places that my wife and I had dreamed of our entire lives. And I didn't absolutely. want to discount that trip for her whining about my hand the whole time. Yep. You know, and I know that as nice or as cool as she can possibly be, you know, she would have been sweet to me. But of course, there would have been that little whipped cream topping that wasn't yeah. so hot. That, <laughs> but yeah, it it is it is it's being able to take the lesson out of every single scenario, whether it be Kilimanjaro, whether it be cold showers, whether it be grease, whether it be smashing your hands, whether it be sitting here, or whatever it is. It's taking the lesson out of it and learning. I mean you either have the choice to continue, continue to grow or you have the choice to stay stagnant. And I think one of the things you and I definitely bond on is that we try to use everything as a lesson. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Well, the, I love your um, path of most resistance. That's my thing. Yep. It is your yeah, thing. I love it. Yep. Path of most resistance. <laughs> Obviously came from a David Goggins book. I was at a bad yep. place. Um, and I say bad place. I, I say every day before this one's usually a bad place for me, so don't take that wrong. Um, I'm better than I was yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know, I read a stat over the weekend that if you're 1% better every single day, you get 37 times better every year. True that. So, you know, when I say I was in a bad place, I would say, uh, you know, comparatively to now, that bad place right around the Goggins book was probably was my rock bottom. Um, that was where I was kicking around, quitting, quitting drinking, going sober. Um, I was not working out. Um, this guy I knew named Alan had this thing called a Peloton and he was, he was, <laughs> he was killing it every day and he liked the competition of it. I was about 40 pounds overweight. This was only about three years ago. Yeah. Um, if you had asked me who this guy is then, I wouldn't even have known him. I knew he was inside. I knew he was covered up, but I wouldn't picture myself here. And if I thought that I would ever be a beacon of athletic prowess or climbing Kilimanjaro, three years ago, Matt didn't know who that was. Yeah. Three years ago, Matt wasn't gonna stand on top of Kilimanjaro. Yeah. And the good news is, is that I think one of the biggest lessons I've gotten is that I was never too, too old to reinvent myself, which sounds like a total cliche until you actually put it into action. No, it's true, it's true. And you're capable. Absolutely. I'm stronger now than I was at 25 years old. Yep. And I have the knowledge base. The one thing that we take, we say to our children is, I wish I knew now what I knew then, which is this yep. cliche thing, but that's the truth. I mean, how many different choices would we have made? Oh, my goodness. Of course, again, using that side note, though, we got to where we are because of the trials and tribulations that we had. So at the same time, I wish I knew this stuff, but I kind of wish I didn't. Yeah. Because I learned so very much. And that's, you know, when we're parenting and I'm looking at my son, my youngest and my eldest, and I'm trying to explain, I've actually been able of the last three years to do something that I've never been able to do before, and that's step back. Yeah. Well, and, and we've talked about this before too. Like the older you get, the more wisdom you get. And mm -hmm. wisdom is a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Beautiful thing. And the difference between wisdom and knowledge is, is a huge deal. And I think that's probably also part of the journey is discovering the distance, the difference between wisdom and knowledge. Yeah, true. Because, you know, wisdom is, is experiencing the knowledge that you've put into place. And knowledge is, is just education. Yeah. It's just learning. I can read anything and learn it. It doesn't mean I know it. You know, yeah. I can read a book tomorrow about how change pardon me don't judge me change a spark plug which i've never done in my life and i um would have to go figure it out hey youtube um, <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, you know, I, I, I think that obviously it's the journey, but you can't, and here's the secret. You can't tell 21 year old Matthew that it's about the journey. No, you can't tell 25 year old Matthew. You can't tell 35 year old Matthew. It's about the journey. Yeah. You do start to figure it out. And I think it, it's very funny is that if you look scientifically, when men's brains start to develop fully, you basically 24, 25 years old is when everything kind of comes together. But if you also think about being a male, you probably can remember around that time getting an aha moment and going, oh, if I don't kick myself in my nose, my nose won't hurt. Oh, okay. Let me do that. So you start to get that knowledge and you start to stack it. And you know, yeah. when you get older, I... But you have to have people believe in you. You have to have the fuel to the fire. I mean, Jeff, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for Brian, if it wasn't for Bill Hitchcock. I mean, I, these guys that I have surrounded myself with, you know, and I have, my, I have my real heroes. I have my Bill Hitchcocks. I have my Jeff Rarys. I have my Justin Kaplans. I have my Brian Hollins. Mm -hmm. I have the people that I really, like, look up to, and I use them as that. But then I have my, what I call my fake ones, which are the ones that are not in front of me. You know, I have Tim Grover and Annie Fasilla yeah. and Joe Rogan and, you know, and, and now this, you know, new book I'm reading with Mr. Crenshaw. I just yep. love, you know, I plug, I've made my own network. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and they are like-minded people. You know, they have this thing. And they, you know, I'm not talking politics or yep. social. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about mentality-wise, that we're not waking up tomorrow. And I love being up on a Sunday at 7.30 in the morning, trucking on my 25th mile while I know 80% 80, 80 of the other people are hungover in bed. Yeah. I love that. Absolutely. In fact, I wish you would continue to do so because I'm here's a secret. Maybe it's not so secret. Those of you that don't really want to do what you need to do, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I'm not trying to win and not beat anybody. Mm -hmm. I know that probably doesn't sound great, but there's a whole list of people, to, you know, I, that's, that's a motivational thing for me is to beat. I don't not like you. Mm -hmm. I want to beat you though. I mean, naturally I'm inherently want to be the best at whatever I'm trying to do. I'm not going to, but the difference between 25, 26, 27, 28 year old Matt and now is that I want to do it the right way. I'm not in the, I'm, I'm not oblivious to other people's feelings, wants, desires, and emotions. I know that you want to be a champion too. So I would much Absolutely. rather help you be a champion too and hopefully beat you at the same time. Kind of like a very good, good example uh, that I recently read was Venus and Serena Williams. Oh, yeah. Imagine living in that life. Absolutely. First of all, the story of that family is absolutely insanity. They're just champions bred to the core. But they were brought up to compete but never be mad at each other. Yeah. Put that together. Two of the best tennis players, probably arguably in the world ever, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not even going to say female, best ever, Yo, yeah. were bred to play tennis together against each other, but never fight about it. Yeah. Probably a lesson we can all learn from. True. You know what I mean? So when I say that I want to be a champion, don't take it the way that, you know, I want to smash the competition, which of course I do want to win. But I'd rather lift up an entire army of people behind me and with me and next to me and yeah. all of us cross it together. Do you know how many times I have finished a 5K or an 8K and I have stopped at the finish line? I am proud of that. I am proud of stopping at the finish line because during the race, I am only wanting to finish. Yeah. It's when I'm biking. It's when I'm running. It's when I'm walking. I want to finish and I want to win. But I am proud of myself that I can show up to the finish line and I stop and wait for my son, my wife, or whoever it is. And you know what else? My son stops. Yep. So we've been doing this long enough now where I'll get there and he'll stop. Because he's 17 years old. Obviously, yeah. he's blowing me away. But he stops now. And it's enough for him to know that getting to the finish line and crossing it ahead of everybody else is perfectly okay. But I'd rather walk across with the people I trained with. That's awesome. And I think there's a really good lesson that goes along with that. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it, it's, it's so cool to be able to run to a finish line and stop and be absolutely okay with the win, yeah. knowing I, I, I won, I'm crossing, but who can I take with me? That's Where's cool. my mom? Where's my stepmom? Where's my dad? I have a great story. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. My kid about five years, four years ago during the Shamrock was getting to the point where he was faster than me. Mm -hmm. And, um... It was great. It's, it's hard as a dad to watch your kid get faster than you. Also, it's as, you're as proud as you can possibly get. Yep. So at one point, I kind of look at him, and I'm like, man, go ahead. Go ahead. 
So he runs off. Well, his mom was at the his mom was at the race, and he was, you know, doing his thing and hauling tail. He saw his mom. He talked to her a second, and he finished. Well, I didn't know where he was, and at some point he had stopped to let me catch up to him, but I had already passed him. Oh. Of course, he's my son. I wanted to catch up to him, so I had ra- I sped up a bit. I wanted to break my. I think I'd finished the year before at an hour and six, and this year I'd finished at forty three minutes. So I was really proud of myself. Cool. You know, my individual thing. So I get to the end and he's not there. Well, dad freak out mode. Panic, panic, panic. Call his mom. He's looking for you. What do you mean he's looking for me? Like that, that moment where everybody's kind of like, uh-oh. So what did I do? Well, the finish line was kind of like a, a there's a marker to a, a mile and a, a mile, a mile and a quarter left again. So I just hooked right back on and did the last mile again. Nice. So I get to the end and there he is. You know, he's there. We cross together. We're excited. We eat our bananas. We get our medals. And his mom walks over and she goes, well, I guess it's true. Your dad goes the extra mile to be your dad. (laughs) And I thought, good metaphor. Good way to bring it around. There we go. But of course, you, anybody that has kids, we, it it doesn't matter. I, I think that's another example of another lesson where at the end of the race, I was exhausted. And if you had told me a mile from the end that I needed to go two miles, I would have told you I couldn't do it. But different motivations and different things that push you. Suddenly you put the maybe of my son might be hurt. Yeah. Might be gone. Might need you. Well, everything that stopped me from, from speeding to the end is now gone. Like, but, but that's the lesson. One mile before the end, I had every excuse. I'm tired. My legs hurt. I'm getting a cramp. I'm sweating. I'm da 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 I can't do this last mile. Suddenly, I do the last mile, and out of nowhere, without thinking, without beating myself up, without being tired, without being exhausted, without my cramp, without my sweat, without anything, I go do another mile, a mile and a quarter. And I don't think I'm some sort of superhuman because I'm not, but that is a perfect example of mindset. You could not finish two miles earlier. Now you're running an extra mile. You didn't even ask yourself if you could do it. It yep. wasn't a debate you had. I didn't go, man, I wonder if I could do another mile. No, I just went out and found my kid. Yeah. And at the end, I was like, I'm pretty sure that was my fastest mile. Out of the whole race, the one that I didn't think about. So what do we take out of that? Uncomfortability. Mm-hmm. The, the living in that uncomfortable moment, making the cold shower, no flinch, mm-hmm. making the cold shower your baseline for the day. Yep. That is basically going that extra mile in that race. That is climbing Kilimanjaro. That is doing those types of things where you take the suffering, the uncomfortability, the thing you can't get by and get by it without even thinking about it. Yeah. Now you need to evaluate. Now you need to go, what else? What are we doing otherwise that we are way overthinking? And if we just let go, if we just let go and let it happen, whether you're a you know, religious person, let go and let God, or whether you're a secret person, you know, the law of attraction, what are we putting out there? Mm-hmm. Whatever portion it is for you, you're probably in your own way. And I found out for many, 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 many years, I was my own doorstop. You know, yeah. I was the one blocking it, or excuse me, I was my own dam. I was the one always blocking myself. And then when I really, I knew I was capable of being able to achieve things. And I think I'm capable of achieving a lot more. But I had to get myself out of my way. And that's. Yeah. I love, um, so Goggins has that uh, 40 60 rule. I love that rule. Tell that me about it. when you get to that 40% of where you think you're physically, your, your physical max is. Um, you think you're at your physical max. He says you're at about 40% of what you can do physically. And, and you've got a whole 60% left. It has and, to be. Yeah, I mean, and, and it just helps remind me to push myself and push myself and push myself. I mean, as he's hanging from pull-up bars with his flesh yeah. falling off his hands. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Yep. He's probably a little insane. Just we saying. all know he's a little insane. <laughs> He's absolutely <laughs> yeah. insane, but he's that, he's that litmus test, that marker of things. To str- and I'm not saying let's go insane, but I'm saying, well, yeah. I'm not, my, 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 my flesh isn't falling off my hands yet. So clearly I haven't gotten to that point. And yeah. those of you that don't know, if you haven't read Goggins, David Goggins book, he's an ex Navy, it was, he's a Navy SEAL. Yeah. 
he uh, does a push-up challenge, and he does to the point where he's doing so many pushes that the skin falls off of his hand. And then and he the pull-ups. He, he crushed the, the world record on the yeah. pull-up challenge, and it took him several tries to get to mm-hmm. it. And all the times that he tried, he lost mm-hmm. the skin on his hands. Yep. It was Whereas, never a point where he went, well, this time I'll be a little different, and I won't. No, he, yeah. he experienced that. He experienced that absolute—I mean, think about it. You get a stubbed hand, a stubbed toe, it hurts. Flesh falling off. <laughs> you know, he, he's the— yeah. I mean, Reading about him in the ultra marathons, it's a really good thing. Oh, my goodness, yeah. But that—you need the David Goggins. You need that guy to show you that you're not even close. Yeah. I, I, if I get to 50% of what he does— I will still consider myself a champion beyond all yeah. measures. <laughs> but when you have him going, oh, well, yeah, okay, oh, I'm, I'm not broken yet. Yeah. yeah he made it. Absolutely. Yeah, he's a smart guy. So, Absolutely. But all, it's that line, and I don't know what we would call it, but there's a, there's a, I almost think of it like a pie chart. There's, there's this, like, this huge pie chart that has this, it's all blue, and then there's like a gray slice. And I feel like the gray slice is the me and the you. And the David Goggins and the Priscilla and the Jordan and the Mamba mentality of, of Kobe and those types of things where it ain't for everybody. Yeah. And and I really feel like, you know, and one of my favorite things is that to get to, let's just use that slice, that little slice, yeah. and let's call that 1%, right? And to get to that 1%, you've got to be willing to do the 99% of things that others just aren't willing to do. And But I, I think that truth, honesty... Mm-hmm with yourself and with the people around you, we see people that talk a lot of game. Yo, yeah. I mean, a oh lot of game and they are, they post motivational quotes mm-hmm. and they seem like they're, uh, you know, we see each other, we feel mm-hmm. each other, but then, you know, there's a difference between living it and there's a difference between posting it. Absolutely. You know, we all know that social media can be the devil. We all know that social media can be the greatest thing in the world. It can mm-hmm. help more than it hurts. It probably has a lot helped a lot more people, but with the pain, with the hurt of it is this, you are looking at someone, and I'm specifically thinking of two or three people who I will not call out, but you're looking at someone who puts on such an amazing front yep. on social media, but you know them internally, and you know that you know they are not getting up and working out in the morning. Yep. They rolled over and said they worked out in the morning. It's, again, that's their journey, and I've been there too. Yeah. So let me, let me preempt all of that what I'm about to say. I've been them too. Yep. I've woken up, time to grind. I was so hungover, I couldn't breathe. <laughs> You know, time to be a champion today. You know, there's nothing. I have a story. Obviously, we're starting to tell it today. Yep. My story is no different and no better than anybody else's. To be honest with you, I just have a way to be. I, 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 my journey has been through a lot of messed up crap. And um, I like to use it as an example to show other people that they can get through their journey, too. So, so, so you know, I don't want to lose. The, I'm not any different or any better than anybody else in that respect. I'm at a different point where I'm able to take the lessons and learn from them. And as I said, up until 43 years old, I ignored them all. So I'm the guy that didn't do it for 21 years, not the guy who has done it for three. So I just want to say it for that. OK, yep. so, you yep. know, I didn't do what I was supposed to do for for over two decades so, you know, there's no judgment here. And I think that's a big deal about all of us in this race it's huge. that people need to understand is that there's zero judgment. I get it. And when you say I can't get up at seven, I'm hungover or that or this or whatever the reason is, I, I don't just nod my head and go, oh, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I, I walked around with post-it notes on my wall my entire life saying the things that I wanted to do. Quit drinking, work out, lose weight, be successful, da, da, da. They were just post-it notes. Yeah. That's it. Yep. Just because finally I was able to grind enough to get to the point of making the decisions to stick, that's the win. Yep. We're all there. It's a matter of that switch, that flip, that movement. What is the thing? What is that moment, the aha, or however you want to decide it, that puts you able to receive the gifts that are available by being dedicated to this type of lifestyle? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I want to make that, you know, I was about to go off on this tangent, but I got to make this very clear because it's very easy to look at my Facebook page and I get it and my Instagram page and basically, oh, screw you. You know, I, I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I see it. And I'm like, I see other people's pages sometimes. Like, oh my God, yes, you're up again. God, you beat me. You know, like <laughs> I do too, but please understand that it only comes from a, 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 it only comes from a place of, I know 
where the core of your brain or heart is right now, where you want to be, where the desires are, but the outside of the core is too hard to break through. Whether your wife or your spouse or your husband or whatever it is is stopping it. Whether your kids are too big of a pain in the tail. Whether your job is absolutely thankless. Whether you're broke. Whether, you know what? Maybe you just don't give a shit enough at that time. Yeah. You want it, but you're like, you know, I don't have the, I, I you know, I, I, have you ever been like, I, I want that drink or that food, but I don't feel like getting off the couch? That's pretty much it. Doesn't mean you don't want that banana as much as you did six minutes ago. You just didn't have the motivation at the time. So all in due time, but I would say as a side note to not judging and, and being that guy that your time's coming. Yeah. It will come. 